I want to tell our, our speakers, I want, I want to tell them that this is not just a matter of young lawyers. I can see senior people, senior colleagues here that are willing to listen to what you have. They have staff that they are employing that are junior lawyers. They have relatives that are junior lawyers. They have uh, friends and colleagues that are really young lawyers. So they would be also interested in listening uh, to what we actually have in stock for them today. I can see uh, Semakade Isaac, you are so much welcome. Isaac is our presidential aspirant for the office of the president of Uganda Law Society. We are still waiting on uh, Kenneth Chipalu and we are still waiting on Atukunda Isaac. We so far have uh, Isaac Semakade uh, on space. Uh, if you are near or close by, I think uh, one of the proponents and seconders of uh, Atkunda is on space. That is Mr. OHT Biamazima. Biamazima, you can tell our presidential aspirant to get on space so that we get to listen to them at once. We don't want to give chance to uh, one presidential aspirant in the absence of the others. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, we shall go straight to, because we are 10 minutes late past the time, I think we shall begin with our first aspirant being uh, Kenneth Chipal, without wasting time. The rules of this space, we are giving 30 minutes. Kenneth, we shall give you 30 minutes to speak to us, what you have in store for the young lawyers. Then after we shall go to Isaac Semakade, Mr. Isaac Semakade shall also equally take an interrupted 30 minutes to give us what he has in stock. Then lastly, we shall have uh, Mr. Atkunda Isaac speak to us, what he has in stock for the young lawyers. Kenneth, as you come in, probably you would uh, get interested that uh, you have been uh, part of the ULS that is probably going to... Uh, leave office in September this year, end of September this year. But you may remember that 27th to 28th May 2020 for this very year, we held uh, a two-day symposium at Fairway Hotel. And uh, while opening the symposium, the ULS president, Mr. Bernard Oundo, highlighted the challenges faced by the young lawyers. And these are the things that he mentioned. One, he stated that the young lawyers have faced a lot of unemployment. There is a very big unemployment gap in Uganda in regards to the young lawyers. And also he stated the other problem being uncertain about their career path. Then Lope, and he mentioned a lot of things. Today, as we listen to you, Bernard Oundo has been your boss. We want to listen to what you are bringing on this space to the young lawyers, what is new in stock for you. The floor is yours, Kenneth. Thank you. Tony, please confirm you can hear me before I start. Kenneth, I can clearly get you, and I want to assume all the members get you. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for hosting us on this space. And I thank all the listeners for making the time to listen to us, such that they can make an informed decision about the kind of candidate they want to vote for, and the president they want to have at the helm of Uganda Law Society. I want to appreciate the lawyers who have belonged to Uganda Law Society from the time it was, in, from the time it was established in 1956. Many people may not realize, but elections for Uganda Law Society president have not always been the norm. Electing a Uganda Law Society president started, I believe, not more than 15 years back. It has not always been like that. And I salute all those senior colleagues that fought for this right. Tony, I am going to respond to the questions you have raised uh, in the course of my, uh, of my speech this, this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, I was called to the bar in 2017. Right after I got enrolled as an advocate, I joined the Supreme Court as a research officer. I was earning 350,000 Uganda shillings at the time. 350,000 Uganda shillings. I need you to bear in mind, I was born and bred in Iganga district. I did not have a family home in Kampala. With 350,000, I had to find a place to live. I had to fend for myself. I had to make it to work every day. All on 350,000 shillings. I went and inquired of Mr. Kagole Kivumi how he expected me to survive on 350,000 Uganda shillings. And I vividly remember what he said to me. He was the secretary to the judiciary at that time. He said to me that young man, right now you need to focus on learning, not your earning. But how could I earn when I can barely survive? That was my struggle as a young lawyer. And it is the same struggle that is re-echoed to this day. So when I hear the pain of young lawyers, I understand it. I feel it. I have experienced it. That young lawyers are only in the profession to learn and not to earn. I understand that pain. That even after five years in school, your learning curve is just getting started. Be that as it may, I continued to do my work diligently. And I am proud of some of the work I did while I research office at the Supreme Court. I am proud to say that I made contributions to Rwanda versus Uganda, 
you know the principle in that case, that sentencing is necessarily arithmetical. I made contributions to Ntambala Fred versus Uganda, which did away the need for, which did away with the need for collaboration in sexual offenses. I made contributions to Babu Converse in Bali Resort, which established key principles in arbitration. All this work I did as a research officer, earning 350,000, but being diligent in my work. When you interact with senior lawyers in this profession, they'll tell you that this is a grey-haired profession. Grazing. Even in this campaign, you have had it. You are not old enough. In spite of your experience, in spite of your track record, in spite of the values you hold. I have a colleague at the farm. He's very good at his craft. He went to see a top executive in this country. And in spite of how good his proposal was, he was asked to go back to the executive when he had some gray hair. My view is young lawyers should be judged based on the quality of their character, based on the values they hold. Maturity does not lie in the age of the man. Maturity lies in the lived experiences of the man, in the values he holds, in the truths that he protects. And that is what I am bringing to the table. You need to find out how old was Mr. Tuyakira Anaklet when he argued Chifamonte Henry versus Uganda. He was a man in his studies. How old was Mr. Masembe when he argued Banco Arab Espanol? Then make an informed decision. When do we make the most impact to our communities? Is it when we are old and grey? Is it when we are young and strong and energetic? Of course, in order to survive with that salary, I had to live at my brother's house. But because of the diligence I put to my work, I was hired as a senior associate at KTA. And now I'm an associate partner where I lead the dispute resolution team. But what has been my track record of service? In 2000, I was appointed chairperson of the Young Lawyers Committee. And as chairperson of the Young Lawyers Committee, what did we do? What did we do? We initiated the Young Lawyers Mentorship Service Program. The Young Lawyers Mentorship Series can still be accessed on YouTube to this date. Because of the pain I had felt myself as a young lawyer, we organized a Young Lawyers Symposium. For that year, it was for 50,000, and we secured the funding that, we, that could enable that subsidy. Of course, I still advocated for cheap CLEs. At that time, the complaint was CLEs are very expensive. They are prohibitive. There is a gate to your acquisition of knowledge as a lawyer. As a young lawyer, you can't acquire the skills you need to practice your profession. We advocated for cheap CLEs. But I realized that even as chair of Young Lawyers Committee, I could only do so much. I decided to go to CLET, Committee on Legal Education and Training. Because of that need that I saw as a young lawyer, I campaigned and got elected to represent Uganda Law Society at the Law Council Committee on Legal Education and Training. If you look back on my manifesto, it was very simple. Advocating for cheap CLEs. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what we have done. Right now at, CL, at, at CLET, which is Committee of Legal Education and Training, Every CLE event does not attract more than 250,000 for a physical attendance. And for an online attendance, it does not attract more than 150,000 shillings per attendee. You need to look back at the figures then and compare with the figures now. It is because of the efforts I put in as your representative at Committee of Educational Training. What else did we do for the benefit of Uganda Law Society? We had a challenge. Uganda Law Society compiles the list of compliant advocates, advocates who have met the minimum 20 CLE hours. But there are so many CLE service providers. I advocated and I said, this is not fair. All other CLE service providers must provide a minimum, a contribution towards ULS's administrative costs. That minute was passed by Committee of Education and Training. I communicated it to the President in an email. I communicated it to the Secretariat. Um, but until now, we are still waiting for a breakdown of those administrative costs incurred by ULS such that we make a decision on how much other service providers can contribute. Now while I'm here, I am seeking for your mandate again to be president of Uganda Law Society. And you may ask, why? Why would I be elected president of Uganda Law Society? Our society right now is largely polarized. We are torn between the young lawyer and the senior lawyer. We are torn between a lawyer down Kampala Road versus a lawyer up Kampala Road. We are torn along political lines. But at the end of the day, there are values which hold us together as lawyers. There are principles that we all agree upon. And the question is, those principles, those values, 
do they outweigh the things which seem to divide us? And my answer is, absolutely. Of course. When I was in law school, I'm going to speak about the things which bring us together as lawyers. When I was in law school, my first constitutional lecture was by a man, every one of us here respects, called Professor Joe Loka Onyango. And in his first class he said, and I quote, ladies and gentlemen, this constitution is your Bible as a lawyer. Never forget that, and you will always be a good lawyer. Right now I wish I could meet him and ask him, the constitution as we have it now, could you still consent as the lawyer's Bible? Whatever is left of our constitution. We have issues to do with judicial independence. Those are issues which affect all of us as lawyers. The integrity of the courts, can it still be trusted? Do you know how much business we are losing? Because our court system cannot be trusted. The business lawyers are losing. Because the courts are perceived as though they act on behalf of the higher power. These are things we should not accept as lawyers. We need to advocate for reforms. We all know when this country started going the wrong direction. We all know what we are supposed to do as lawyers. Being that voice, reminding us of constitutionalism, that the existence or the presence of the constitution does not equate to constitutionalism. That there are principles that underlie constitutionalism. And the ink in the constitution does not equate to that. That while we may have a constitution, it may not necessarily equate to the rule of law that we want. Can we advocate for these reforms as lawyers? The rule of law is the bed upon which we lay our mattress of legal practice. It does not matter whether you're practicing on William Street, whether you're practicing on Nakasero Hill Road. If, a law, if you do not have rule of law in your country, if you do not have principles that make things predictable, you won't have business. You will not have a practice. And this should be the voice of law society. This is the voice with, with which we should be speaking. Remember, speaking truth to power. Not shying away from what you have to do. Not shying away from what you have to say. Speaking the truth as you see it. That is what I'm here to offer. Those are the values that bring us together as lawyers. And it is my argument that we have strayed from what was envisioned in 1995. Whatever is left of the Constitution makes a mockery of the rule of law. And as law society, we need to be at the forefront of the rule of law and constitutionalism as we know it. To progress the bar, to progress the bench, to progress society. And I believe a good bar makes a good bench. A redundant bar makes a redundant bench. A lazy bar makes a lazy bench. We need to be strong. We need to be true to our values. We need to be true to our principles as lawyers. And that is what we need to advocate for as law society at such a point in time. Whether you belong to which political party, if you're NRM, if you're FDC, if you're a young lawyer, if you're an old lawyer, let us be the voice of reason. Let us be the voice of constitutionalism. Let us be the voice of the rule of law in this country. However, I'll leave that at that. Right now, I can see there are so many senior lawyers on the call. But largely, it was a young lawyer's uh, space. What are the issues of young lawyers? The students. What are the issues of the students? After four years in law school, you're not admitted to the bar. Why are you not admitted to the bar? Last year, uh, in last year's intake, they admitted 2,000 students. In this year's intake, they have admitted 1,500 students. Why is the difference? Someone at finance cut the budget of LBC by 1.8 billion. And as a result, LBC says they couldn't take on more students because that was the money supposed to enable the opening of the campus in Mbari. But let us think of this as lawyers. Is it possible that an institution which was designed to cater for one university can take on the 14 universities now teaching the Battle of Laws program. Is that something, is that something fathomable? 14 universities. And they are increasing. I see that clearly, and I can assure you, by the end of next year, we are likely to have 18 universities teaching law. So is the solution going to be opening up of more campuses? My view and my proposal is, one, either open up the teaching of the back office, let LDC become an examination center. In the alternative, LDC should become a fully online program with a discussion on how, on, and, and, and we agree on how examinations can be conducted. And I believe Uganda Law Society should come up with a position paper on the future of legal education. We do not have it. We don't have a position as Uganda Law Society. 
And yet, legal education is very critical to our practice. It is from LDC, that pipeline of students coming from LDC, it is where you extract your human resource. It is where you're going to extract the lawyer who's going to, to take on the matter after you. Those are the people you are going to hand over your law firms to. So it is very, it is very critical that we pay attention to what is going on at LDC. And as we pay attention, let us be mindful of the quality of students that are coming out. We owe them that duty. Those are the guys who are going to be appointed magistrates. Those are the people who are going to be in our chambers, giving advice to clients. Let us be credible. Let us be involved. I've got now the issue of enrollment. That's after you've acquired your postgraduate diploma in legal practice. I want to clarify. Most people have been saying I sit on the law council. I do not. I sit on the Committee of Legal Education and Training. Our mandate is not with enrollment. It is strictly with supervision of legal education and CLEs. Enrollment is the function of the law council where the president sits. And it is the reason I'm asking for this mandate. Just like I know what CLEs well articulate, I want to push for the digitization of the enrollment process. This is not complicated. It's not complicated. We can push for digitization of the enrollment process. We pay. When a lawyer is applying for, for the certificate of eligibility, they pay some fees. How much money does government collect as a result of that mandate that these students pay? Can that money be channeled towards setting up an online platform where students can digital, where lawyers can digitally apply for a certificate of eligibility? But even then, assuming law council does not want to move digital, if, if it is hesitant towards that migration, I'll tell you something. The, you, the, the Uganda Law Society is the body that compiles the list of compliant advocates. Advocates who have met the minimum number of 30 hours in every calendar year. That list is compiled by Uganda Law Society. But guess what? Statutorily speaking, that is a function of the law council. But recognizing that there's a human resource challenge at the law council, they decided to delegate that responsibility to Uganda Law Society. And it is the reason why. KK, I, I, KK, KK, I'm just informing you that you're remaining with five minutes, then we shall prepare to listen to Isaac. Thank you. Okay. So, can we, can we employ the same thing we did with CLEs on, on enrollment as well? If law council can't do it, why can't Uganda Law Society take it up? I've been at law council. I know how to engage with those technocrats. And this is the reform I want to push for. Certificates, certificate of eligibility now. You've got it. You want to enroll as an advocate. Whether you have enrolled in August, whether you have enrolled in September, if you go to Uganda Law Society, you are required to pay the annual subscription fees. I find that grossly unfair. This lawyer has not been earning. He does not have a PC. He's enrolling in September. You want him to pay 550000 as subscription fees. My view is different. If a young lawyer is enrolling for the first time, we need to prorate it to the number of months left in the calendar year. They do not have to pay all the 550000 For what? For crying out loud, the guy in January is going to pay the full under subscription fees. So why can't we prorate that money? How much time is left? But my time is fast spent. And my queue in Tanzania, in Tanzania we don't have interest fees for new advocates. My queue, uh, new advocates are, are exempted from 30 hours in their first year of practice. There are issues to do with pay. I've already told you. I understand the issues of pay for young lawyers. We need to engage with our senior colleagues. Let us be fair, as Uganda Law Society, as we prefer, Uganda Law Society prefers lawyers. Let us be fair to our lawyers. We have issues. Uh, Tony, I'm, I will not be able to go all through my manifesto, but there are issues to do with access to legal materials. Uganda Law Reform Commission has now put a fee in order for you to access the revised laws. Hmm? Which young lawyer can afford that? And if you do not realize that most young lawyers do not afford that, you are privileged. And you are probably blind to your privilege. Young lawyers are still relying on laws available in Yuli. Why? Because they cannot afford the laws by the Uganda Law Reform Commission. We need that online access. If not, we need to have institutional access as Uganda Law Society. Institutional access to Yuli. Such that our members can benefit. We need to enter into that engagement with Yuli for institutional access, allowing our members to access it. We can agree on the modalities. Lastly, because my time is up, ladies and gentlemen, I'll borrow the analogy of Shakespeare. Beware of the ease of much. You remember that which you want Julius Caesar? Three times, beware of the Eids of March. I'm telling you the Eids are here. The Eids are here. The Eids of March are here. And they are here to kill our profession. They are here to take away our bread and butter. Four years ago, we were doing conversing deals. Right now, how many conversing transactions do you conclude? Six years ago, we were incorporating companies. How many companies do you incorporate right now? These are now things directly done by people without the need for a lawyer. 
And my view is, can we protect our space? Can we protect some jobs for lawyers? You have registrars in URSB who do not know anything about law. They have a checklist where they tick. And they can't reason with you if something is not ticking the box. Why can't we protect our space? You are a protected clearing agent. I am a lawyer. I know how to clear goods. Thank you, KK. Yeah. Tony, can I just conclude? In just a minute. Okay, within one minute. In just one minute. Just as you are a protected clearing agent, Uganda Law Society needs to protect the space of lawyers. People shouldn't come and eat up from our space. I thank you very much for listening to me. I am Kenneth Tifal. I am requesting for your vote, mandate, and support for the role of President Uganda Law Society for a one ULS for a strength in our unit. I thank you so much, Tony. I thank you so much for the listeners. Uh, thank you, Kenneth. Thank you for that uh, speech that you've given us, your manifesto, highlighting uh, uh, very important points in your manifesto concerning the life, the welfare, and the working conditions of a young lawyer. Uh, maybe you could mute. Uh, for those that have just joined us, Kenneth spoke about learning vis-a-vis earning. One of the important cases that uh, he researched about is uh, Bob Converses in Bay Resort. It's one of my best decisions from the Supreme Court. But he also speaks about being diligent in your work if you really want to earn more than what you want. A friend of mine, Isaac Mpanga, has stated that you could start by reducing on pay as you earn. Nobody talks about this but man. to So maybe as uh, we prepare space for Isaac Semakade, he has listened, and also uh, Atkunda Isaac have all listened at the points raised by Mr. K.K. Kenneth Chipalo. And he speaks about mentorship symposium being reduced to 50,000, but he also speaks about witches that want to kill our profession. So without wasting time, I will uh, leave the lost rum to Mr. Isaac Semakade to probably list for us and highlight for us what he has for the young lawyers. Isaac, legal rebel, the floor is yours. Good evening. Uh, Tony, can you hear me? Please confirm. Isaac, we can hear you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tony. Okay, good evening, colleagues who have tuned in this event, this evening to um, hear a tripartite conversation from the three candidates uh, for the presidency of the Uganda Law Society 2024. Uh, Tony, first and foremost, I'd like to correct how you introduced me. I am not a presidential aspirant. I am a confirmed candidate. Uh, a status I achieved through jumping a number of hoops that were placed in my way. So maybe you would like to acknowledge that uh, for the record before we proceed. Apologies taken in, sir. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Colleagues, on the 28th of September this year, you will be compelled to make a cross-generational choice. The status of youth of being a young lawyer is not permanent. It is transient. It expires after five years at the bar or after you've passed the 35 age group. The 35 year old, I think. As for the last uh, time, the bar tried to uh, ascribe a definition to it. However, there will always be a vulnerable section of the bar that uh, fits and occupies this category. And it is not out of uh, a lack of concern or empathy for us to stress it. It is the nursery bed for the bar's talent. So it is worthwhile to discuss it. Um, my concern then when I think about young lawyers is not about the young lawyers only that we have now. It's the young lawyers who will be impacted by the decisions we make now because I believe the young lawyers suffering now are suffering because of the decisions that were not taken 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. We have a 67-year-old bar. So let us then ask ourselves what will the year 2060 will look like. The population of Uganda currently estimates that 46 million will at least double by the year 2060, reaching 140 million people. It will surpass India's current population density of about 455 people per square kilometer. I have lived in uh, Bengaluru, Kelaro State, and I know what this means. Uh, you need about 12 lane roads. Uh, you need high rises and lots of, uh, you know, and, and, and very, very foresighted city management. By the year 2060, we will live like the people in South Korea who need very meticulous, meticulous city planning to even, you know, get the basic necessities of life. This is a sobering thought when you consider that we are now defined as the city that can't manage its garbage and is suffering loss and tragedy. And we have no position about that as the bar. That is worth thinking about. That the bar, as currently composed, does not, hasn't yet, uh, arrived at Chitezi. Not just to solve the current problem, but to, to lay the pipework for 
garbage management for the future young lawyers and their children and you know and fellow youth by the year 2060. In standing for leadership today, unless we are reckless, unless we are flippant, unless we are careerists, we have to humble ourselves and know that we'll be making decisions that will affect many, will affect many people who will come many years after us. And for me, that is the background of my decision making here. I am impelled by a dire focus of population explosion and how it will affect our legal profession. It is unacceptable that we are still organized under the Uganda Law Society Act of 1957, which commenced at the time when Uganda was a colony and her population was only 6.2 million people. The Law Development Center Act, which you are all now very familiar with, came into force on the 21st of August 1970, along with the Advocates Act. That's about 54 years ago. It hasn't seen any reform in that time, and the Advocates Act saw many more reforms in 2002. That's 22 years ago, largely around the law council. As a result, LDC has become a relic of an education institution. Like Lord's wife, it continues to look backwards to an era before Uganda fully embraced the liberalization agenda in which it finds itself perilously lost after 40 years of experimentation. LDC, unlike other educational institutions that have aligned their systems to the Universities and Other Cultural Institutions Act, it continues to sit atop, we have been told, close to 18 universities, like an insensitive, inert, moribund organization, which operates more like an abattoir than a fit for purpose incubator of indigenous legal practitioners in the 21st century. And I make these remarks with quite some respect for those who still volunteer to teach there and guide the next generation of young attorneys. They still have to do their job. It's a thankless task. Somebody has got to do it. But it is now very clear that the job of reformers, the gene of reformers, is cast at the bar. It is cast. Uh, we lost. We got lost on the other old link. Maybe we, we got lost on the old link. We could uh, probably join on this. Isaac, sorry, we lost you on the old link. If we could get you on this link, probably we could uh, continue listening to you. Uh, Isaac and all the other presidential candidates can join on this. Uh, I can see Ivan, I, Ivan, in your absentia, uh, Ivan Okuda, you probably like the case called Babukon versus Mbari Resort. Today we have been informed that by KK Kenneth Chipalu that he is one of the researchers in this case. That, that, that may be my inform your decision of giving him a vote, probably. Uh, we, we lost, we lost Isaac, uh, Semakade, if we could get him, well and good, but as uh, he prepares to come in, and Kenneth also prepares to get on the space, uh, we were reminded by KK that we have witches that want to kill the profession, and he gave a lot of examples. Probably maybe you can take a point from that, uh, from his manifesto. But he also juxtaposes the fact that maturity lies in the value of the man, and he gives an example at what age was Mr. Masendo when he was arguing uh, Bank Arab Espanol. Maybe you need to uh, understand that. And uh, when he speaks about this case, I remember my senior colleague Semiaba. Maybe I want to ask him whether he was in his 30s or 20s when he was arguing this case. But as we wait for Isaac is here, thank you, we, we can... Uh... Isaac, sorry, we had lost you, but you go straight to uh, your, your, your speech. Sorry, we had lost you, Isaac Semakade. We can listen to you. I, I need you to confirm. Hello, can you hear me, Tony? Yes, we can hear you, Isaac. Yeah, I need you to confirm time, because this is time sensitive. Yeah. How much time do I have then? Isaac, you had just spent seven minutes of your time, so you still have much time. Hello? You are just spent seven minutes of your time. You still can have you hear seven me, Tony? I'm afraid I can't hear you, Tony. Isaac, can you hear me? Tony, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Isaac. I can hear you. Uh, Isaac Atkunda, can you hear me? Tony, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Isaac Atkunda, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, uh, Isaac, so much, there may be... Isaac, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Can you hear Isaac? Uh, Isaac, you can speak to us. We can, we, we can hear you can speak to us. Okay, as we prepare to listen to Isaac, maybe we can be listening from uh, Atkunda Isaac to catch up with our time. At Atkunda, we can give you time. When Isaac comes in, then we can prepare to hear from him. Isaac Semakade, can you hear me? Isaac, can you hear me? 
Atkunda, can you hear me? Isaac, Isaac, can you get me? Isaac, can you hear me? We can hear you. I think what you do is just inbox uh, the relevant uh, parties and then they get online because you can hear all of you speak. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mujira. Uh, At Kunda, Isaac, before we even delve much into what Isaac Semakade has been stating, I want you to just come in right there where Isaac has ended when he gets connected and he has very good internet and he can listen and he can hear us. We shall entertain him. Isaac Atkunda, you can speak to us. We can give you some minutes and you speak to us. Thank you. Isaac? Okay, as uh, we, we, we wait for Isaac, I'll, uh, as we wait for Isaac Atkunda and Isaac uh, Semakade, uh, I'll uh, listen from Daisy Elizabeth. Daisy, we, I don't know whether you listened to what Mr. Kenneth Chipalu submitted on, but if you can hear us, probably you could speak to us in a few minutes as we prepare the other presidential candidates to get on the space. Thank you. Okay. Yvonne, Yvonne, I have been seeing you online from the very start that Kenneth Chipal started speaking. Do you have anything to comment about Kenneth Chipal's manifesto towards the young lawyers? I could give you just in two minutes as we prepare the other presidential candidates to come in. Then I'll go to Louis Chizito. Yvonne, it's your space. Yvonne? Isaac, can you now get us? Can you hear me? Can you confirm that you can hear me? Isaac, can you hear me? Louis, Louis, can you hear me? Louis, Chizito, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, kindly, we, we have had one presidential candidate speak about his manifesto towards the young lawyers. Is there any comment you want as we prepare the other presidential candidates to come in? Is there anything you need to add on Kenneth Kipalu's manifesto? Uh, mine is going to be a simple comment. I, I Maybe we'll just supplement what he said, but I'm not going to directly rebut or respond. Me, mine are concerns in under two minutes. Um, firstly, I think Uganda society should be more forward thinking than it is right now. The New York Bar Association, at the close of 2022, made a very sobering report, which I think is also going to affect the, the, the practice here, because Ugandans were reactionary to global dynamics. It said that 24% of lawyers' work can be automated. It can be. And it estimates that by 2033, certain tasks will not even require lawyers anyway, because we're doing them now, but we don't require them now. This is why I'm, this, 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 this is why I brought up this, uh, that point. Number one, how prepared is the society to champion the kind of market-driven changes? I am not seeing that mindset at all. All I see in the Uganda society is a group of senior lawyers who are comfortable getting donors' money, and they're in comfort. Not knowing the donors' money, by the way, those interests change, eh? You can wake up today and DFG is closed. All the dynamics have changed and the British are like, now our priorities are elsewhere. You get? In as much as we need to champion rule of law, we need to champion uh, justice, I get. How are we going to expand the market? And lastly, uh, uh, Tony, I, am, no, I wasn't very happy with the current administration at, at Uganda Society when I drafted a bill for Honorable Navigator that sought to, among other things, expand the areas of practice for young lawyers. What are these areas? Decentralized finance. That is cryptocurrency and virtual assets. Do you know how much of virtual assets passed in Uganda? About 5 million US dollars, and that's just in one quarter. How many lawyers are managing those deals? Most of them are Nairobi. We are trying to create a law. I actually lobbied the current administration of Uganda Society. That at least that training, and we're going for it for free. Well, they turned the deaf ear. They, went to, they said bordering on technicalities. You know, you got, all these CLE need to be approved by you, you law council. But you see, the market is not going to wait for you to adjust. Like I said, it is very possible that if you're not the kind of lawyer that we need in the next five years, young lawyer actually, has to be trained for the kind of market challenges. Unfortunately, once we wait for the market to bomb us, we might lose out and actually all that, whatever is supposed to be done here will be done. Like, the areas I'm actually talking about are global practice areas. I will show you that very many Nairobi-based law firms are doing the kind of work Ugandans are supposed to do. One in these areas, decentralized finance and major these tech things. They are writing opinions people in Dubai to come and do business here. Yet a Ugandan can be trained. So Ugandan society, let us not just rely on donors' money and champion those interests. Okay, it's fine, you can do it. But the population is growing. 
I went to another society to go before parliament and say, there is this area, Ponzi schemes. How can Sorry, we get... Uh, hello, Isaac. Yes, uh, Louis, now we can get Isaac here now. Louis, we shall entertain you. Isaac is on now. Thank you. Isaac, we can hear you. The lost drum is yours. All right, thank you. So, I may come to have about 20 minutes. So, Yeah, uh, Louis speaks uh, very sweet words. They align with our digital transformation platform uh, for taking the Uganda Society back on track. Uh, and I thank him for that. The Uganda Society has to be forward thinking. Our thinking horizon is Vision 2060. If you elect me, that's what you'll get. You won't get lies. You won't get nice, you know, hand-holding, sweet nothings. You will get the real hard gold truth. You are exposed to full-blown neoliberalism. You can fight. But I don't see any fight among, I haven't seen any fight among the last 40 years of young lawyers. So this falls upon this generation of young lawyers to put up a fight. And fight you must. Good manners, we don't get it. We don't get it done. So let's speak about how young lawyers are created. I was saying that young lawyers are created in an abattoir called LDC instead of a fit for purpose incubator of indigenous legal practitioners for the 21st century. The press is endlessly awash with LDC's atrocities meted out to miserable young lawyers from sexual harassment to suicide inducement. The center cannot hold the time present to us doesn't uh, allow a proper expose of just how stinking that place is. But we mustn't forget that lawyers who come to the bar highly traumatized, barely have the stamina to stay, barely have the stamina to be productive, to stand up to the challenge of Vision 2060. The Advocates Act reforms of 22 years ago to retrofit the law council as an enabler of legal practice have shown themselves to be wholly misconceived and unfit for the purpose. The results are clear for everybody. Advocate poverty and inequality are the prevalent concerns of every average legal practitioner. I have huge problems with you, Tony, personally, and your Young Lawyers Network for thinking that this is a problem of identity politics, young and senior lawyers. It is a systemic problem of reforms that haven't been undertaken fast enough to complement liberal, neoliberal, you know, stranglehold on this post-colony. Stop infantilizing young lawyers and be like my good friend Louis. Empower them to fully enter the global age and fight like hell to create synergies that bring them to power with their colleagues in Nairobi, Dubai, and New York, and the Bahamas. It's possible. It's been done in other fields. Okay. Right now in Uganda, young lawyers are provided a small, rich, elite cabal that has been saved the disillusionment forced upon the rest of us. Who must suffer bureaucratic delays in enrollment, which we discussed generously at length before, and out-of-date rules of professional remuneration. I will expound on that in the course of campaigning, but your rules of remuneration are out-of-date. You can't not have a facilitative regime of remuneration that allows contingency agreements, success fee agreements, you know, the taking of percentages on court winnings. Your judges are unruly in their enforcement of the costs rules. They think costs are in their grace instead of treating costs as essential to the resilience and existence of the law firm institution, which is the which is the most, you know, the irreducible minimum for negotiating access to justice for millions of Ugandans. They, imp they, they put the law firm at peril through whim whimsical determination of their cost rules, unlike neighboring courts in Kenya and South Africa and elsewhere, which have understood that the cost rule is not to be taken lightly. The winner, the, you know, loser pays rule should be enforced swiftly because that's what maintains law firms. And lawyers and clients and the market must be able to design a great range of alternative business arrangement, alternative fee agreements that still manage their competing interests. My good friend, Phil Kagawa, thought that if we fall out of champerty and maintenance, we will wreak, you know, wreak havoc on gullible Ugandans. Don't infantilize them. Don't paternalize them. They are already doing sophisticated fee agreements with us in the trenches. You can have the comfort of the safe corridor in banking and commercial law. Please take care to understand the nature of complex innovations we have made representing the poor. Fred Mwema is our star, and I will celebrate him if you elect me. Uh, drastic measures really have to be re are required to rescue the legal profession from its uh, deepening crisis. Only radical leadership and reforms will help advocates thrive under the triple threat of rapid population growth, increased exposure to the outside world through technology and, the new and liberal policies, plus the threat of yet another uh, devastating pandemic. So what is the solution? What does true leadership require? I will point you to the shining castle on the hill, but the journey won't be easy. Nobody has taken it before, so let me articulate it clearly. It is two wheels of a chariot that will take us to the shining castle. Wheel one is called reclaiming the rule of law. Wheel two is called courageous and unconventional solutions. I repeat, we will not 
reach the shining castle on the hill in the year 2060 without taking a two-wheel chariot called reclaiming the rule of law and courageous and unconventional solutions now not later. Now, they should have happened 40 years ago. They weren't taken. Shame upon the young lawyers of 40 years ago. The young lawyers of this, of this day will have a golden goose in Isaac. Sebaka day. They bang the table candidates. This is your last chance saloon. Take it. Don't listen to those dinosaurs. Kabbalistic scripts that have brought us here. We have a statutory duty as a bar to constantly remind public officials, including judicial and prosecutorial colleagues, to ensure that Uganda is a capable state that abides by and upholds the rule of law as the equalizer. That is our statutory duty as a bar. Of course, there are attorneys that succeed well without this mantra. Theirs is ruled by law, like Chidio Wachiwanuka. And as a bar, we mustn't miss wives. We have a Chidio Wachiwanuka problem. I warned the bar when the man was appointed. I have sued him today to declare a thick red line in the sun. We have a Chidio Wachiwanuka problem. Vote me enormously with a mass landslide to deal with it. Ignore me at your peril. If we want our profession to continue to grow alongside the population of Uganda throughout the remainder of the 21st century, we have to undertake serious soul searching, stop worshipping demigods like Yowa Tiwanuka and his cabals that have destroyed every institution in this country. We have to stop the nonsense of mythologizing generational differences. We are one. Each generation must come to knees and repent at the altar of the bar. Each generation must write a long list of repentation and seek penance from the young lawyers. Who will provide, who will be here, provide legal services in the year 26? Some of these dinosaurs will not be there. You will be here, young lawyers. So it is upon you to get the ULS rule of law mission back on track. That mission isn't for a fake habit, it isn't for goody goodies, it isn't for suck ups, it isn't for people pleasers. You must reject them. Today, I have filed a case to reject one such problem. I will do more if you elect me. So let me go quickly to the second wheel, courageous and unconventional solutions. We have a pragmatic duty to cultivate a culture of conducive professional relations, both with the state and non-state actors. I repeat, we have to enter deals, principal deals with the state and non-state actors. My friend Lewis has told you exactly the about next step. The bar is the problem. These carriers like uh, Kenneth and Atkunda are the problem. Kenneth and uh, Lewis has reported them. They are the problem. They stand in the way of progressive outliers like Lewis, Kizito, and I. Okay? So we mustn't discriminate outliers and progressive foresighted thinkers like Lewis and I. It, is, it falls upon us to ensure that Uganda is spared much of the conflict and poverty we see elsewhere in Africa. Despite the certainty, I have told you that rapid population growth will not wait. However, we can't guarantee that the economy will continue to grow. As a matter of fact, young lawyers, the truth of the matter is that the forecast is so dire for you. Lewis has given it to you. We can safely predict that the real wage will continue to fall. Salaries will be depressed greatly. And the majority of you will move in mass exodus from the bar to meaningful jobs elsewhere. Capable talent will be lost and the legal profession will become a pale shadow. This is what we are dealing with. I know this because I have been persecuted to every to the hills. And I'm not taking it lying down. I'm running to save my own career, my own personality, my own family. Because the rest of the bar is, pre is living in a pretense that somebody is coming to save us. Guess what? Nobody is coming. Hell is already here. We, have, we will continue to catch hell if we don't accept a radical overhaul. I have proposed a four-legged stool on which the bar can reclaim its mantle. We need to harness the courage and creativity of those who are conversant with the techniques and tactics of decolonization like Dr. Msije Kabumba, demilitarization, Dr. Msije Kabumba, democratization. Professor Chuko, uh, Dr. Oloka Unyango, and Digital Transformation, Louis Samuel Kisito, and many others. Are we waiting for them to die before we celebrate them and put them in the driving seat? Hell no! It is essential for us to revitalize the legal profession, overcome its challenges, and enhance its relevance. This mission will require us to focus on restoring public trust as I have done throughout all my career. Every day, I have gone out to fight for the public trust. And I, unlike me, unlike my colleague, I don't have to tell you the examples. Oh, you know. Drag about him, could work. What's that? We have real problems now. We have to restore public trust. We are a pale shadow of ourselves and we have to respect the independence of our secretariat. So many people are running to be president of the bar to interfere <laughs> with the operations of the secretariat. I'm not one of them. I'm not one of them. I have no tips and beefs to move with anybody at the secretariat. I have no remaining invoice to, to, to steal from anybody at the secretariat. I want to climb the tallest tree and call out dimwits and get their, their knee off our bar. I have done that today through a case I have made available, and there's more we can do. I will stop here for now. We shall speak specifics later. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Isaac Semakade, for your speech is really, really entertaining. I find it entertaining, and I don't even wish to let you stop. Uh, the manifesto is so big for the young lawyers, but uh, what essentially comes out that we must step up. We shouldn't just do only court business. Uh, 
at Kunda, are you here? We, time is fast, friend. I think we can entertain at Kunda Isaac. Then we can take in uh, a few people to comment on uh, the manifesto agenda of every speaker that we have tonight. At Kunda, I can see you. Uh, Isaac, it's your time. We are ready to listen to you. Maybe I would advise Isaac Semakade to mute his mic as uh, Isaac at Kunda comes in. Yes, Isaac, the floor is yours. We are ready to listen to you. Uh, your, your predecessor speaks and makes great points about uh, one, a society that does not sit on itself. If we actually sit on ourselves, hell is going to fall on us. But also, yeah, Isaac speaks, Isaac Semakade speaks about uh, digitalization of the entire system and also not to worship those people that we have been fearing and all that. So, Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Isaac Atkunda. Good evening, Tony. I hope you can hear me. We can hear you, Isaac. Thank you very much. Good evening, Tony, once again. Good evening, our listeners. Uh, my name is Atkunda Isaac, as already introduced by the host. I'm the current Tony Secretary of the Uganda Law Society. I'm also the managing partner, Credo Advocates, and I'm the candidate for the post of the President, Uganda Law Society. I have been the Honorary Secretary, and I have chaired the different conferences and uh, activities of the Uganda Law Society. For example, the recently completed annual law conference where I was the chairperson of the organizing committee. I have garnered enough experience and exposure in dealing with the different stakeholders and dealing with the management and administration of the Uganda Law Society. And that's why I'm contesting so that I may be able to put into action the experience I have garnered for the last two years. Uh, I am contesting with the agenda of an independent progressive bar. Uh, and uh, this will be executed in accordance with the mandate of the Uganda Law Society, which is provided for under the Uganda Law Society Act. The Uganda Law Society has a strategic plan, and this plan provides for the young lawyers. Uh, I will borrow the quote about leadership. Uh, to me, the duty of a leader is summarized by, by a quote by John C. Maxwell, and it says that a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. I know the way, I will go the way, and I will show the way. And the supreme quality of leadership is unquestionable integrity. I am a candidate of unquestionable integrity. For the two years I've served the society, uh, uh, everyone can be a witness. I've been available to the membership. I've executed my mandate without bias whatsoever. Now, regarding today's discussion about the young lawyers, I would want to first look at who a young lawyer is. For purposes of Uganda Law Society, a young, the working definition of a young lawyer is an advocate who has been in practice for less than five years. But in other jurisdictions, a, a lawyer who is below 36 years is also considered a young advocate. As already stated by my, uh, by fellow candidates, I think it's high time the Uganda Society Act is amended so that we can talk about the age of a young lawyer in Uganda. The mandate of Uganda Society is provided for under Section 3 of the Uganda Law Society Act, and uh, in summary provides that the duty of the society is to maintain and improve the standards of conduct and learning of, of legal profession in Uganda, it is to facilitate the acquisition of legal knowledge by the members of the legal profession and others, and it is to represent, protect, and assist members of the legal profession in Uganda as, required, as regards conditions of practice. Now, it follows from that mandate that Uganda Law Society owes an obligation towards the young lawyers. And uh, in fulfillment of that mandate, the Uganda Law Society election regulations provide for representatives of the circuit clerks uh, to law council and specifically the Committee on Legal Education and Training. We have representatives there who are supposed to be uh, concerned with how the training of young lawyers is conducted in universities under the LDC. And as well, the, the, the society has a strategic plan which provides for how the business of the society shall be conducted for the next five years. Today, I was researching about the problems faced by young lawyers, and uh, I realized that it's a global problem. It's not just a problem in Uganda. For example, in India, there was an article by the Lawyers Association published in 2022 on the challenges faced by the first generation lawyers in India. And the problems there are not far different from the problems the young lawyers are facing in Uganda. In 2018, Kingsley Annie wrote an article uh, about the 21st century lawyer challenges. And specifically, he discussed the challenges faced by young lawyers. And uh, he had this to say. He said that during the golden era of law practice, the 50s to mid the late 90s, the legal profession was reserved for the comfortable elite who could easily, you know, dispense, uh, dispense with, the, with the clients' affairs. But Currently, the profession is uh, available for everyone. That's why in Uganda now we have big numbers joining the profession. So, to me, the challenges faced by the young lawyers in Uganda are the challenges which every other bar association is grappling with. And it is our responsibility as leaders or aspiring leaders of the society to address these challenges. Uh, uh, personally, I appreciate today's engagement because we have to speak about this critical issue of the young lawyers. And to me, uh, the young lawyers are the future of the society. So if we don't address 
the challenges they face today, we are not building a better society for tomorrow. Salute to the seniors who have, for the last 66 years, held the Bar Association of Uganda up to now. And we are glad to take over from them. So it's our responsibility to make sure that we build the Bar Association, which the future generation will also find the way we, fo- we found it, but find it in a better position than it is now. I would like to mention a few a few interventions the current council has undertaken to address the issues pertaining to the young lawyers. When we joined the council, we deliberately reduced the cost of CLE trainings for the young lawyers. Currently, the young lawyers pay less than what the senior lawyers pay when accessing continuing education trainings. We also introduced mentorship series for the young lawyers. The senior lawyers have been engaging the young lawyers and sharing with them the wisdom of how to succeed in practice. We started the rule of law clubs in universities so that we engage the young lawyers away from the universities. Then also we lobbied the law council to increase enrollment. When we joined Uganda Law Society, law council was enrolling around 30 advocates every like two months. Currently we enroll over 190 advocates every month. So among others, those are the interventions the current council has, has undertaken to address the issue of the young lawyers. But we appreciate the young lawyers still face a lot of challenges. And I want to thank you, our host, Tomukunde, 23 year Young Lawyers Network. You highlighted these issues. And as leaders, we've listened. And among the issues highlighted, for example, there was an issue to do with high cost of joining Uganda Law Society. There was an issue of high cost of CLE trainings. There was an issue of unemployment or underemployment. There was an issue of low wages. There was an issue of limited representation in Uganda Law Society activities and committees. You raised an issue of limited opportunities for professional growth. There was an issue to do with limited practical legal practice skills the high cost of accessing legal literature, for example, the laws of Uganda, and delayed enrollment by law council. And these are genuine issues which definitely should be addressed. Now, one of the reasons I'm contesting for the post of the presidency of the Uganda Statistics is to address the issues pertaining to young lawyers. But maybe to explain my, my, my agenda a bit more, I'm talking about a progressive and independent bar. Progressive in the sense that the previous councils the previous leaderships of the society have laid the foundation. So we are not starting from scratch. We are building from where the other councils or the other leaders stopped. As already highlighted, the current council has done strategic interventions. And if left the president, I will continue from where the current council has stopped and ensure that the issues pertaining to the young lawyers are addressed. But the start is not generally just about the young lawyers. So before I dive into the issue of young lawyers deeply and addressing those challenges, let me talk about the mandate of the society besides the issue of young lawyers. And I would like to start with the issue relating to rule of law, because this is the foundation of successful legal practice in any jurisdiction. Now, when I talk about rule of law, I'm reminded of the speech by Justice John Roberts, who started his commencement speech by wishing the graduates bad luck and not good luck. And he said he didn't want to follow the pattern. And this is what he said. He said that from time to time in the years to come, I hope you'll be treated unfairly so that you'll come to know the value of justice. I hope you'll be ignored so you know the importance of listening to others. And I hope you'll have just enough pain to learn compassion. And this is why it is important and the key for us to listen to the young lawyers. Now, as Uganda Law Society, we must take keen interest in issues to do with rule of law. That's why, personally, I'm so compassionate about the issue of access to justice and rule of law, specifically to do with the independence of the judiciary and accountability. I appreciate the judiciary has taken steps to address issues of accountability and its independence. The interventions to some of us are not sufficient to address the deep, the deep rooted problems in the judiciary. We have delayed court decisions. We have uh, the, the quality of court decisions has tremendously gone so low. We have an opaque system of recruitment of judges for which Uganda has tried to interest itself and we do not have sufficient answers. That is why, personally, I would think as a society we need to intervene and hold the judiciary accountable for our practice thrive. And I would propose that Uganda Society, for example, introduces a judiciary performance a judiciary performance uh, appraisal form, which I know the judiciary has introduced, but as you know, we shall introduce the same form so that lawyers are able to appraise the performance of judicial officers. And every quarter, we shall be publishing the results out of this appraisal so that we hold the judiciary accountable. I know some members are saying that we need to take drastic measures. I, I think it is okay to take drastic measures, but they should be calculated drastic measures. I know, for, for example, if you take, let's say, a measure which puts the judiciary in a bad place, you throw the judiciary down the drain, you will be equipping politicians with the ground for disrespecting the independence of the judiciary. If you address the judicial officers in public, you, 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 you're making the judiciary weak, and this enables the politicians to take advantage. And as lawyers, the moment the judiciary is rendered weak, 
it means that we have no place for practice. So personally, I believe in engagement of stakeholders. I believe in discussion. I believe in holding stakeholders accountable as, as per our mandate as Uganda society. Now I'll speak to the issue of the young lawyers. Uh, when elected the president, I promise to do the following to address the issues pertaining to young lawyers. Number one, I will propose that we reduce the cost of, of joining Uganda society from annual subscription of 500,000 to Uganda shillings 350,000. This is how I will do it. I will move a motion, present it to the annual general meeting for approval and consideration because I appreciate that young lawyers joining the bar are not working. They have spent so many years in law school, so they must pay reduced subscription for joining Uganda Law Society. Number two, I know currently the young lawyers are paying reduced cost for legal training, for legal education and training. Personally, if elected the president, I will ensure that young lawyers access free legal education and training. We shall hold workshops, we shall hold seminars, we shall have training sessions to enhance the skills of young lawyers. I know when a young lawyer is well skilled. If, you know, if a young lawyer has got the practical experience, the issue of pay is addressed because the young lawyer is able to do work sufficiently and naturally the beginning position of a young lawyer is improved. Number three, I will ensure that we provide the young lawyers with networking opportunities. We shall introduce a young lawyers international program. It's already working in Kenya and in Kenya, for example, there is a partnership with the Canadian Bar Association. And the young lawyers are provided with international opportunities in top tier law firms and multinational companies and government agencies. Enable them gain experience in practice. Number four, I will ensure that we provide career guidance workshops for the young lawyers. This enables the young lawyers to learn how to make appropriate CVs. We prepare them for interviews. We advise them on career paths because most young lawyers like me when I had finished LDC, I didn't know the career path to take. So through these career guidance workshops, we are able to advise the young lawyers on the career path to take. And also financial literacy and life work balance lessons. I know for sure young lawyers, even the little they earn is not well budgeted for. They need these skills in financial literacy and how to balance life with work because research has shown that most young lawyers are stressed because of the problems they encounter. I will also ensure that we introduce a Uganda Law Society online library. Through the online library, we shall be able to afford young lawyers an opportunity to access legal literature at a reduced cost. For example, the laws of Uganda are currently expensive to access. Lawyers expected to pay 500,000 per, 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 per month to access the laws of Uganda. I know a colleague has suggested that Uganda Law Society can, can, can pay to you and have access to, 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 to the legal literature. I, I want to defy a bit that this we can do as Uganda Law Society. We have done digitalization. For example, today, a lawyer does not need to move from Kisoro to Uganda Law Society to obtain the Uganda Law Society ID. It is accessible online. Why should we subscribe to you when ask ourselves we can have an online library and enable our membership to obtain legal literature? I will also advocate for review of the advocates' enrollment and certification regulations with a view of introduction of digitalized enrollment process. I know we can talk about advocating for digitalized enrollment process, but there is a law providing for enrollment and certification. Unless it is reviewed, some of these ideas may not be implemented. So I will ensure that I engage law council, I engage government, and we have these regulations reviewed. Law council must clear all the enrollment backlog in the short term because there is no reason why a young lawyer who has finished LDC should stay without a practicing certificate because of a backlog. This is not a problem of the young lawyer. It is a problem of government, and the government must provide a solution. I also opine that you can also need to have an enrollment officer who can always support young lawyers who are going through the process of enrollment because eventually they become our members. So we should be able to support them through the enrollment process. When I become the president, I will make sure that Uganda Society has an enrollment office that support our young lawyers. Then, for our young lawyers who are, in region, who are practicing from regions, and it's a good thing because I have visited different regions of Uganda, interacted with the lawyers there and the young lawyers, we shall ensure that we have regional conferences. For example, the annual conference we recently concluded, we can have annual conferences in regions. And then the young lawyers also get the space to interact with the senior lawyers. Uh, to interact with the senior lawyers. I will also ensure that we introduce the young lawyers' excellence from the Bar Awards. So that we motivate the young lawyers who, who have tried to excel despite the challenges. Because this motivates the young lawyers. Isaac, Isaac, I, I, Isaac, you have three minutes because you want to open the debate to the floor before you come in and make your conclusive remarks. You have three minutes to end. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Let me try to conclude. I will also ensure that we have an affirmative action for the young lawyers. We need to amend the Uganda Law Society Act and provide for a representative of, of young lawyers on the council. Currently, the young lawyers are more than 3,000 members of Uganda Law Society, but they are unrepresented. I know, for example... The amendment of the, of the act is ongoing. It was hampered by the lack of the, of the certificate of financial implication. But to engage in the attorney general to make sure this certificate is provided, and for sure the young lawyers need to be represented. Then we shall also ensure that we provide, we support the young lawyers in employment opportunities. Today I was engaging lawyers up country. For example, why can't we engage stakeholders in regions and ensure that, and ensure that companies 
which are operating from these regions have local content. Why should a company operating, operating in Kalamoja hire a lawyer from from Kampala when there are lawyers practicing in Kalamoja? Why can't a company operating in Kalamoja hire an accountant from Kalamoja? So we shall support the young lawyers by engaging stakeholders so they can get these employment opportunities. Then for, for, low, for low wages and lack of contracts, we shall engage our membership and ensure that they provide contracts for young lawyers. And also we shall engage law council to make sure that each law firm has an employment policy. So that before a law firm is given approval, law council looks at the employment policy. I have all this in my agenda. I can confirm that Thank if you elected the Isaac. president, I will implement these premises I've made. Thank you very much. Thank you, Isaac. You may understand we do not have uh, the whole night to listen to your good ideas like we have done to each candidate. So we do to you to stop and give the floor the space to other speakers. Colleagues, you have listened to what Isaac has talked about in regards to young lawyers, Isaac Atkunda. You have listened to what Isaac Semakade has told us and you have listened to what Kenneth Chipalu has told us. Tonight, if you're going to sleep over your vote, you may have a choice to decide on who should be your next president on 28th September. As I open the floor, I'll first begin with Cynthia. Cynthia, can you hear me? Uh, good evening. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, you can speak. You have two minutes to comment on what has been spoken about. Uh, no, I just have a question for Atkunda. Uh, well, Go on, please. <laughs> well, I know that Atkunda is the outgo outgoing vice president for the, for the Uganda Law Society, so that, so that means he's been part of the problems that the ULS is facing today. So I'm not so sure how he, he can convince lawyers to vote for him. Did he address, did he address any of the problems that they are facing right now? And if he's contesting to address challenges of like young lawyers, why didn't he address them while he was serving as a vice president? So how can he convince them that he will be able to address their problems if he's elected as a vice president? Cause to me, uh, his our solutions sound more theoretical than practical. So could he <coughs> convince them? Okay, thank you, Cynthia. Atkunda has taken note of your question. I'll go to Ivan Okuda. Ivan, can you get me? Yes, Tony, thank you um, for organizing the space. Uh, well done. Uh, proud of you, my old boy from uh, Chocolate Boutique. Um, if you may, just two minutes. Uh, one, I, personally, I, I find a challenge with these um, redundant uh, categorizations. I don't know, young lawyer, senior lawyer, um, upscale lawyer, downtown lawyer. When, when all is said and done, the grand scheme of things, um, given the size of Uganda's economy and, and our level of development, you know, we are, we are all really uh, in this Noah's Ark of, of, of struggling to uh, try our bearing. Um, as reading the other day, I'm writing, the, the realities of, of the labor market in Uganda, 83% of people that sell with uh, the National Social Security Fund have less than 10 million shillings. So you can imagine if by the age of 45, 50, uh, where you qualify to, to, to access your NSSF savings, 83% of Ugandans with money at workers' house can only access 10 million shillings. But even more, 50% of those have less than 1 million shillings. And the average income, according to the data from NSSF, is 250,000 shillings. <laughs> so when you talk about low wages and, and, and all these things, it's, it's, a, it's a much more uh, deeper structural prob uh, problem of the labor market and, 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 and this, um, this economy that, that goes beyond um, uh, the legal fraternity. And, 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 and so I find these young lawyer, uh, upscale lawyer, downtown lawyer categorizations really uh, redundant. Uh, the so-called big law firms are employing how many people? Less than, less than 25 on average, uh, advocates. Um, and, and, and most of those uh, can hardly, uh, you know, um, give, give those advocates a decent uh, income uh, to be able to keep them afloat. So we're all really in this noise art in, in, in a broken system and, and, and an economy that, that uh, in more ways than one is a tale of two cities, as Mario Como um, put it in 1984, the Democratic National Convention, when he was describing the American economy as a tale of two cities. You've got this one shining um, hill, and, and downhill, you've got people that can hardly uh, find accommodation and, and food and, and water uh, to keep them running. So um, I am personally not excited by, by, by these um, um, categorizations which you, you really like, of young lawyers and whatnot, uh, even at the ripe old age of 30, which I am. Uh, I think that uh, in terms of the political economy of uh, the Ugandan labor market, uh, the issues are much deeper than, 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 uh, than the reductionist approach that seeks to uh, reduce the discourse to young lawyers, senior lawyers, exploiting uh, junior lawyers. But even the senior lawyers, when they fall sick, we have to pass a basket around for them to get um, medical care. They're one medical bill away from, from a calamity. They're one medical bill away from going back to the village. Every single day I see uh, adverts, I mean, communication from the Uganda Law Society. You've got law firms closing. Some of these are not less than 10 years. Someone who was having an office on Kampala Road, uh, downtown Kampala, is retreating to Yumbe, to Koboko, to, to, to Sarot, because Kampala Gang. So, uh, I mean, it's, I, I, I think we find ourselves in, in this, in, in this bottle like grasshoppers, uh, biting at one another. And then what that does, okay, thank you. Yes, uh, one minute, uh, then we lose sight of, of the bigger picture. And at that point, uh, I think that of all the candidates, Isaac Samakade, for me, scores an A+, plus because he's got a big picture outlook to, to the place of the Uganda Law Society in our political economy, in our political and social uh, economic context, 
And I think that a president of law society that, at least for me, that would be appealing, is one that is able to appreciate that the bar association uh, exists in an ecosystem um, of, of so many dynamics and, 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 and social tensions that, that, that it must be able to uh, critically think through. Um, this discussion about, you know, been counting around, uh, I don't know how much are people paying to, to access uh, a physical conference and, and, and that kind of thing is important, yes. Uh, but I think that in 1956, when the framers of the Ugandan Society Act uh, came up with that law, specifically under Section 3, Subsection D, the provision that the Uganda Law Society shall exist to protect and assist the public in Uganda in matters touching ancillary and incidental to the law, in more ways than one, puts the Uganda Law Society at the pedestal of what the South African equivalent is called the public protector. That the Uganda Law Society exists not simply as a club of lawyers, but its calling and place and role in our democratization process, in our economic development journey as a country, is one greater than simply uh, taking care of the welfare considerations and needs of, of the bar or members of the bar. So I think that if I were to make a decision on who deserves my vote, I would go for the track record of a candidate in respect of their uh, contribution in terms of Section 3, Subsection D, protection and assistance of the public in Uganda in matters touching and salary and standard of the law, or what, again, in South Africa, we call the public protector. And I think that um, Samakat has done um, pretty well. His, 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 his works speak for themselves. Uh, Hassan Vasadia Balaba, that case with Legal Brains Trust, which is, I think, now the Supreme Court, uh, just a close amount of money. If, 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 um, if, if, if he registered Victor at the highest court, that would be served on, on, in terms of the taxpayer. At a time when Selanyanzi, Dr. Selanyanzi at that, could not be touched by even the biggest law firms, uh, when she was having challenges with her freedom of uh, expression and, and, and speech, it was Nicolas Supio, it was Semaka Day, it was Zay Peter Olubi, who uh, could afford to, uh, to fight for her, for, for, for her justice. So I think we need a law society that can stand up to be counted, especially given the extremely delicate uh, political transition that Uganda is headed for, where it won't matter whether you're young or Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ivan. Yeah, so anyway, thank you so much, Ivan. I just wanted to have that. I've had my own differences with Samakade, but I think on any day, um, if if you asked him to to, to make his uh, last uh, speech, he would speak as Biden recently spoke when he was uh, making his last remarks. Uh, He said, America, 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 I gave my best to you. I think you can have challenges with Samakade's controversial character and and outburst sometimes, uh, but I think in terms of the law society as a public protector, Man, he's got my vote. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Ivan. I will, I will give just to Vicky. Vicky, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, okay, just, just, just be precise. Pose a question or make a precise comment. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, my question goes out to Councillor Kuda Isaac. Well, first, first of all, I want to ask him uh, what are his thoughts on the outgoing ULS cabinet? Uh, did, they, did they do a good job? What does he think? And we have, we have heard about his, uh, his what he plans, the reforms he plans to put in place. Um, his proposals to uh, to change the, the, the legal structure, um, um, such by reforms at the the law council, in the law society. But my question is, uh, have these have these issues just come up? Has he just realized them, or has he just thought about them? Is it a new concept? All these are things that he already saw when he was in power, um, because he was secretary. Secretary, my sister Cynthia made a mistake by referring to him as the vice president. She was a secretary. So as 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 the, as the secretary, did, did he just have the power to do this, or or he wait, or he's waiting to become president to work on them? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Vicky. I'll go to Mike. Mike, be precise. Mike Chirunji. Uh, thank you so much, Tony, and thank you for all those that have submitted today and the aspirants today. Um, I just want to put a few points across <clears throat> because everybody is seeking for an inclusive law society, a law society that is not deterring the young brains or the young lawyers from doing their practice. Um, Isaac Semak had talked about being open and going for the highest goals, and I think it's the same thing um, Kenneth, uh, Kenneth highlighted about. But my question is... Um, oh, we have had aspects whereby we can do cross-border practice, and these are some of the chances that are being created by young lawyers. But when you look at the various countries, and I've not had the law society coming up now, this one goes to Isaac, about the cross-border practice and also the common market protocol in respect to legal practice. I was searching about Burundi, where I normally practice and work. They opened up for lawyers. As long as you can practice law in your country, you're free to practice law in Burundi. I have not seen the law society coming up. Uh, teaching the public or teaching the young lawyers or teaching even the senior lawyers about these various opportunities in various countries. Two, we need a strategy that is more inclusive of each and every member. We have had Isaac in this mantle as the honorary secretary. What are some of the achievements he has put and why is he making all these promises right now and yet he had the mandate to make them or to bring them to, to light when he was still the secretary? Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Anne, Anne Namara. Anne, can you hear me? 
if Anne cannot hear me, can I, uh, Docas Kwagala, can we hear from you, Docas? Docas, can you hear me? Can I hear Nakato Rebecca? Nakato? Nakato, can you hear me? Oh, hello. Sorry. Um, I have one question, though. Um, so, as I'm a bit compelled to express my concern uh, about you, and it's like, um, I, I still wonder how, like, I still wonder why they've not adequately ad addressed the welfare, uh, sorry, the, why they failed to address the welfare of, sub uh, sorry, <laughs> people. Okay, Njagala, I need to, what is it called? Like, I, I have a concern about the Nanalo society. Like, they've adequately failed to address the welfare for, for the, the young lawyers in these law firms, eh? Um, especially on this issue of, uh, minimum wage. They know Kubera and Sasuri, what these people like. It feels so unfair. Like, these young lawyers go out there and make a lot of money for these law firms. They make them huge, like, huge amounts of money. But then at the end of the day, we really don't understand why, um, these law societies have failed to come up with laws at least to regulate on the amount of money that a young lawyer is supposed to receive at the end of the day. It's really unfair. Chitumala more money as us. And also, I, I personally hate my career already because of a particular law firm I applied for a, a job in, and they told me they would pay me 500000 per month after paying millions of money at university and spent there four years. Like, I felt like these people are being so, so unfair. So I really need these people to also tackle that issue. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. I will go to one of the people that have been very passionate about issues of young lawyers, even when you think is getting a better salary, but is still advocates for the welfare. And that is Julius. Julius, the floor is yours. Pose any question to these people that are standing to be our candidates. Thank you, Tony. I hope I can be heard. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you, sir. Thank you, Tony. Uh, now, Tony, you, you raise an important element. I was once in private practice, but uh, before I switched sides, I tested on the wrath of the profession. And uh, why I have been uh, at the forefront of advocating for a better profession is because I know the issues we are dealing with are real issues. It's not like we are discussing academics or we are discussing something that is just going to pass and then we go to something else. We are discussing real issues. We are discussing issues that are affecting real people, issues that are affecting people's careers, issues that are affecting people's futures. Now, I want to appeal to colleagues here, especially the voters of the Uganda Law Society, that when the time comes, please remember that we have had people speak English. You see, the problem I have with us lawyers, and me included, myself included, is that we speak too much English, but then we tend to forget to focus on the real problems. Now, we have had all these issues that we are raising. We have had people come before and tell us the same stories time and again. And here we are tonight. We are faced with three people and we have to make a choice. Out of, of the three, we have to choose one. And Tony, you pose the question and you're asking, will it be Semakadi, will it be Atkunda or Kipalu? Now, I want to appeal to colleagues. We have had the benefit of listening to all the candidates. Now, do we want to continue in the system that we have lamented upon for all this time? Or do we want to have at least a hope even if there is no guarantee, but at least a hope that something new might come out. Do we want to continue this? I had one of the candidates say that for him, he's for advocating for diplomacy. I mean, we have seen diplomacy. It is the order of the day that has been happening. You see, people have been uh, talking so much about Semakadi and his way of doing things. I might not personally agree with how Semakadi does his things at certain times, but I share a vision. For as long as Semakadi shares a vision that I too believe in, I think he's the right person for the job. Why? It is evident in the past what Semakadi has been doing for the profession, compared to the uh, two of the candidates. And this, I say with all due respect to the other two candidates. I have nothing personal against them. I do not know any of them. But they have been in the system. And they seem to be now rotating around the solutions and the proposals that Semakadi is already proposing. Okay? They seem to have just woken up at the moment to realize that our profession needs an overhaul, to realize that our profession needs to be helped. They seem to have actually woken up as a result of Semakadi waking them up. I, I do not have any difference, I mean any personal issues with uh, those two people, but they have been in the system. All the things they promised for the members, for the profession, they have had an opportunity to do them. Kenneth has, uh, uh, yes, Chipalu has been uh, on the Committee on Legal Education and Training. Yes, he told us it's not a committee on enrollment, but I mean, those committees, their roles, are, uh, if, if I should say, intertwined, eh, so, to say, so to speak. Isaac has been at a pivotal role in the leadership of the Law Society. Where have they been? If they want to claim they were not in the position of president, they have been in the Law Society collectively. Why did they not advise the president? Why did they not, as a government, collectively work on these issues that they already foresaw? So why do they wait at a time right now when the society is heading into elections and they want to make us believe that they are passionate about these issues? And yet these are issues that Semakadi has always talked about. Semakadi has written 
uh, strongly about the profession, about uh, the legal education, about the backwards, about the training, about the enrollment. He has been at the forefront of fighting for this profession to make it better. These two have even had an opportunity to serve us and to make the profession better. And they haven't. And here they are. They want us to give them another chance so that it goes to waste. And, and, and lastly, as I conclude, some of the solutions they are proposing seem to me to be the solutions that Simakade has actually proposed over time. So if those are the solutions they are proposing, why then don't they conclude their term and let Simakade, who has held those issues we hope for, for a period of time, and he's a new blood, and he has methods that we believe, why don't they step, step aside, finish their term, and let the new person and the new blood take over and make our society better? Why do they want to keep us rotating around? Thank you, Tony. Uh, thank you, Julius. Uh, before I let in anyone come in, I, I will, I will uh, end with two speakers. Time is first spent. I need to give the last parting shots to our candidates, three of them, and respond to the, to the questions posed against them, but also make the last request to, to ask for your vote from young lawyers. So I will entertain Mungai, then lastly, Owek Diamazima. Let's begin with Mungai. Ah, uh, call me James. That's my simple name. Well, I just want, James, I just want to thank Samakadi for, <laughs> for, for, for his presentation. And at the same time, uh, I think redeeming his image before us, the protesters who have been saying much parliament, who had crossed lines with him. You know, Uganda needs radicalism. I'm a medic who has been tired with the, the kind of hierarchy in medicine. These guys are just seated up there. They are so big. They hold big offices. And we who practice medicine at, at the community level, we are suffering. And it's the same thing with lawyers. You want to see your lawyer connects with the community. Now, this young girl who stripped. Just see how can those guys have been in jail. Look at medicine as liberating. Sometimes medicine says if you can't jail a mother. If you admit a child, you're admitting a mother. Now, you just can't help mothers who go to prison because lawyers are not listening. Now, Semakade speaks like a lawyer who has been on the streets with us. And for me, he has redeemed his name because we were hating him over recent when he, he turned against us. Thank you. Thank you, James, for those comments. Uh, Biamas, might just allow me to bring in Shubra, Shubra Claire Kasosi, before Biamas closes and then we open uh, the floor to uh, our candidates to give us their last parting shots. Kasosi, Shubra, come in, please. Shubra Claire Kasosi, if she's not uh, ready, uh, Biamazma, please speak. You have a few minutes to pose the question, hope to precisely have a comment on what the three have stated. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. I've taken keen interest in listening, and at some point I couldn't identify the second podium speaker because it turns out mostly that uh, someone is realizing that it is important to carry on a particular decorum when addressing lawyers. But then that is a very threat to which he stands. A man that changes character to fit a narrative becomes very dangerous. To the young lawyers, I just listened to my friend Abimanya Julius. Uh, he's seated probably somewhere in Mbende as a state attorney earning a very good salary. Young lawyers like me and others that have patiently waited in private practice after our law school and decided and stayed, and in peanuts, listening to people giving us advice on who to elect for president, and yet they do not face the same problems like us, is not only, is not only a mockery, but disheartening to people like us. It is like introducing a football match in a place that you well know is full of crippled. These are the people that want to give us ideas. It was Kwame Rukuruma that said, the history of the Congolese shall be written by the Congolese. Young lawyers, we have an opportunity. This is not because I have seen the leadership of the Uganda Law Society. No, it is because I've been a young lawyer. I've toiled my way up. Law school, clerkship, did everything possible. Failed to enter government. I share the same pain with all those other young lawyers. But backing a man like, I, like Isaac Atukunda, see, you can't promise me as a young lawyer that you're going to democratize, decolonize. But those are not my problems. My problems are, how do I go back home and tell my dear girlfriend, Joan, that I cannot parent this month? Those are my problems. How do I go back to my little young boy and the mother is telling me they need immunization money and I cannot afford it? See, my problem is, why do I go to a law firm and they tell me, we are paying you internet? That is what Afkunda Isaac is telling us. That yes, I may not put the money in your pockets, but I can build capacity in you. I had a friend of mine supporting one of the candidates here who called me and told Joshua, Ever since we left law school, your life has changed. I think it was Tipalu Steele who told me that, Joshua, most people give you more years than you are in practice. Because, have, because, because we are the young lawyers that have decided to persistently stay in practice. So you need to take my advice keenly, interestingly, and with a lot of care when I tell you that why would this man be the best candidate for this presidency job? I do not take home a big pocket salary. State attorneys are paid 5.2 million, but still they want to dictate for us. And others, quite a number of colleagues here. But this being a symposium for the young lawyers, this is my parting thoughts to my colleagues, mostly the young ones. The road will be paved for us. The leadership of the society will make sure that it gives us these opportunities. And you do not need to sit back. You need to position yourself in a place of identity. And as long as the society can identify you as a person that can offer something, you will be offered that. 
the president is saying, I think we need to have a representative of the Uganda Law Society. If that doesn't come from a fatherly perspective, who else would do that for us? He's saying maybe, let us start recognizing them, give them the awards that they deserve. This is how we can uplift their souls and make them understand that practice identifies and recognizes your effort. And that's how we grow. All these other practitioners that we see here today, the prominent Aaron Kiza, the prominent uh, Mark Dosmond Kaviga, they started somewhere. But when we get on the internet and it's flooded with activists in areas and uh, whatever country they come from, and they believe and think that they must dictate on how we young lawyers, yes, we do observe their opinions, but to what extent should we be driven by those opinions? I think really, let us look in depth into our hearts as the young people. Don't get persuaded by what you see on a daily. Yes, I would fan- I, I fantasy all these things while I started my legal career. I, I, I was a fan of big words. I was a fan of hairstyles. I was a fan of a lot of things. But when you get to legal practice and you gain responsibility, you get to understand that the process and the legal profession and the predecessors and the presidents that came before us and the lawyers, people like attend the same paper, when they fought for this profession, they knew that one day it will be our turn as the young people. It is, our, it is our opportunity as young lawyers. I can only ask and pray that when the time is right on the 28th, look no further. Like Isaac Semakadi has said, it is an opportunity for us, the young lawyers. Let us make no mistake. Let us vote for Atukunda. Maybe Isaac. Thank you. Thank you, Owek. Thank you, Owek. One minute. One minute. Yes, that, 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 while I conclude, young lawyers, on the 28th of this month, make sure and make no mistake, it should be at Kunda Isaac. And when he doesn't, I promise when I run for presidency, when my time comes, I will account to this date. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yamazima Owek. Uh, in order of parting shots, we shall start with uh, Isaac at Kunda. Then we shall go to Kenneth Chipalu. And then we shall end with Isaac Semakade. I, I want to just give chance to one person that I've never seen do anything on X. That is Chitra Dick. In one minute, as uh, Atkunda, because Atkunda was asked many questions, so that's why I'm beginning with him. Uh, Chitra Dick, please, one minute. Thank you, Tony. Uh, my, my issue here is one, that as a young generation, we should not risk again to vote a president who is looking for employment. And by caution, it is Atukunda and Kipalu are basically looking for where to sit. And at the end of the day, they part their ways and go. But we need somebody who is from the streets, who understands the streets, who understands the language of the street. And in my vote, I tell it with that of Ivan Okuda, and I will vote for Isaac Semakade. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chisra Dick. So can we hear, I, Isaac, Isaac Atkunda, you have been asked very many questions. Why now? You have been part of the system. Why now? What new thing you bring on table? And let's hear from you, Isaac. You have five minutes. According to you, we shall also add five minutes to Chipalu, then five minutes to Semakade, then we close this. Thank you. Yes, Isaac, you can speak to us. Tony? Uh, now, in my parting shots, I would like to use the quotation by Zig Ziglar that success is a journey and not a destination. As I earlier highlighted, our council has started the journey of empowering young lawyers. For example, I stated that we have started digitalization process. Now, young lawyers can access all your services online. We have set up the benevolent fund, and soon we shall be starting the healthcare fund. We have reduced the cost of CLE trainings. Also, U.S. House is getting ready and we shall be having conference facilities, host workshops and seminars for the young lawyers. We have engaged law council and it, is, it has increased enrollment. We know this is not enough. The backlog must be completed. And we are engaging them to make sure they complete this, uh, they, they complete the backlog. If they don't, then we shall take drastic measures which may include a court action. We have filed public interest litigation cases challenging, for example, the Computer Misuse Amendment Act. We represented uh, the, the, the protesters in the World Parliament campaign. Plus, I was in court. So we have started the journey. The council I served on has started the process of addressing the issues of the young lawyers. Uh, the host, I would like to inform our listeners that the council serves for only one year. Now, some of these drastic changes are changes which cannot be carried out just in one year. Now, imagine if in one year we have been able to do, I, I mean in two years we've been able to do what I've highlighted. What, what would have happened if we had like four years in office? We would be able to address some of the key issues I've highlighted that I would address uh, when elected the president. Let me give you statistics, for example, uh, the host and the listeners. Now, U.S. has 4,700 members. We have 1,100 law firms. And LDC every year graduates around 1,500 advocates. We have 14 universities teaching law. Now, the issue of the numbers 
is not an issue that can just be addressed in short term. It's a process which we have started on. And rightly, uh, the, contest, the, the contestants are talking about digitalization. This alone may not resolve the issue. We need to look at the entire, uh, the entire cycle, right, from universities. Uh, if the numbers are not controlled, for example, from, from, from the point of entry to universities. Now, as a society, we, sh- we shall be facing the challenges because it takes us time to address the issue of the numbers. But also, uh, uh, most listeners talked about the issue of low pay. In, uh, the issue of, of low pay and low wages is not just an issue that can be addressed in the short term. You must take into consideration the economy. How big is our economy? Tanzania is the biggest economy in East Africa with a GDP of, uh, of uh, 79 US dollars. Then we have the DRC and then Uganda. Now, it is not possible to force law firms to pay a minimum wage. But as I highlighted, it is possible to engage law firms to make sure that they have employment policies in place so that young lawyers are able to negotiate for the deserving wage. And also we shall incentivize and reward law firms that are giving better pay to the young lawyers as a motivation. We know that in the short term you cannot resolve the issue of law pay. And as I highlighted, we intend to build the capacity of young lawyers. And people are asking, why didn't you do this? We started. We had the young lawyers mentorship series. We have, we have started the journey. And I am well placed. Put in, uh, to, to put into action some of the ideas we had that we couldn't complete in the two years and also my ideas. I, am, I will be the president. I cannot be judged based on what the previous council didn't fulfill, but I applaud the previous council. I applaud the previous councils and the previous leadership of the Uganda City. We have had the Uganda City for the last 66 years. It has had leaders. Leaders have laid the foundation. It's what we are building on. For the young lawyers, we have been young lawyers a few years ago. We know... Isaac, Isaac, Isaac as you conclude, the last, uh, uh, the last speaker, Chisir Radik, I made an allegation that most of the presidents of ULS want to keep a clean record with government so that they get jobs. They don't serve the needs and aspirations of the members. Please, are you willing to be probably appointed a judge or you need to clear that? Uh, you know, I cannot speak on behalf of the other presidents or the former leaders of the Uganda Law Society. I will speak on my behalf. I have not applied for a job anywhere in government. I do not intend to apply for a job now. I am an advocate first, and I'm a member of Uganda Society first. Before anything else, I have been on council. I have not been conflicted because of, of, of my beliefs, and it is unfair to judge leadership of the society best on one's beliefs, because when you're a president, it doesn't mean that you will, you will, you will offer leadership as for your beliefs. You have a council. Today we may be speaking as presidents and offering solutions, but there is a council. There, there is a strategic plan. You must engage the council. You must engage the members, because some of the reforms require a resolution of members. If members do not agree to certain changes, as a president, you don't do much. You must be able to engage the members so they buy into your, your agenda. And this over time we have done. For example, before I became the secretary, I petitioned for members' welfare. The then council uh, uh, rejected our petition. When I joined the council, we introduced the health care and benevolent fund to address the issue of, uh, of members' welfare, which I had petitioned for. So a leader offers leadership, and a leader should be able to, 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 to ensure that the membership and the council are aligned to the leader's agenda. And this I've been able to do. Thank as you. Secretary. Thank this you, I Isaac. Do. Thank, you. The president. thank you, I- Thank you, Isaac. These are longer than parting shots. We thank you for giving us your last brief of your manifesto to the young lawyers. We need to give chance to the other candidates. Uh, Chipal, one thank of you. the people that I respect, Chipal, Chipal Kenneth, one of the people that I respect most, that is Nicholas Sopio, says the Uganda Law Society will soon, if they haven't already, find out the importance of having good leaders. Please, as you give to us your parting shots, most of the people have alleged you have been in the thing, and this directly came from Julius Narimanya. He says, and he, he, he equates you closely to at Kunda Isaac, that you have been in the thing. Why now? Why haven't you changed these things? Then another speaker said, you have come up because you have seen Semakade come up. Please, as you close up, uh, kindly respond to these people. Thank you, Philip. I want to clarify. Not every revolution is televised. The cemetery is full of unsung heroes. Just because you're receiving media attention does not negate the fact that there are other people contributing to nation building. You want to know what I have been doing in the past. Please check the records. I have cared to elaborate some of the things I have done as my own contribution to building a better Uganda Law Society. I have been at the Committee of Legal Education and Training. You can check the minutes. What have I said about the question of LDC? You can check the minutes of the Committee of Legal Education and Training and find out what my views have been long before this campaign started. Like I've said, the cemetery is full of unsung heroes. And nation building is not only for those that are televised. Am I looking for a job? I am an associate partner at KTA. I am comfortable with what I earn. As you are aware, there was a blanket grant of G1 positions to all people that were research officers. I declined to take on that job. If this was about a job, why didn't I take on that job of being a magistrate? I am a lawyer in private practice, affected by issues that are common to us all. Rule of law. Judicial integrity. 
the oneness of our profession, bound by the values and principles we hold dear. That is the reason I am standing. I am not looking for a job. I'm not unemployed. I invite all members of Uganda Law Society that are listening to us today. But please, the mind is the standard of the man. I have cared to elaborate the things I'm going to do with actionable points. Judge me by that standard. Do not be speculative about my intentions. My record speaks for me. I am here to serve as I have served before. I have always been serving. I respect the views of the other candidates, but I've laid out my plan, and the choice is in your hands. I invite you to exercise it wisely and vote me into office as president of Uganda Law Society. I thank you. Uh, thank you, Keke. I, I want to ask you something that has been a big allegation to you on this face, and I need you to clear because you have voters on this face. I can see very many people like Lutaya saying the man for the job is uh, Keke. Uh, Justice Hunter seems to suggest, he's not, he's not a lawyer, but he seems to suggest that you have done the same thing and you are preaching the same thing. What different thing are you bringing on table? Yes, the records have spoken for themselves. The records speak for themselves. What is that one, one, one last thing that you will achieve in your 100 days for a young practitioner, one to five years? One, I have been in practice. What am I going to achieve for the young practitioner in the first 100 days? We must begin the engagement on expanding the space for the young practitioners. I already made that point. That the jobs we used to do when we had just entered practice have been eaten up by people that are not lawyers. Can we expand that space? Can we begin that engagement? I've already told you that young lawyers who have just gotten their certificate of enrollment, why could they pay any subscription fees? Let us prorate it to the number of months left in the calendar year. Those are things I am intent on. Like I reduced CLE fees when I was chairperson of the Young Lawyers Committee. Like I initiated the Mentorship Series program, which you can still access on YouTube. I am going to build on that to serve young lawyers better. These are conversations we are going to continue to have. I do not have a magic wand, but we shall continue engaging. We shall continue having these conversations. I'll be here to listen to you. I'll be here to attend to you. Such that we can build ourselves. You hold my hand as I hold yours. Together, we build a stronger law society. We do not want a polarized society. Our strength is in our unity. And that is the mantra for this campaign. Thank you. Uh, thank you, KK. As we prepare to bring in Isaac uh, Semakade, and uh, probably we shall close the space for today as people wait for another debate, a bigger one. Uh, Isaac, the people that have spoken, your opponents, KK and AI, have been in the society. They seem to understand it better. They seem to suggest that there is a space that they understand better than you. You have not been in the space. And some people have alleged that what you have fought for, probably they have also fought for in other fora. Please, we give you space to clear the air. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please confirm that you can hear me. I hear a background noise that is disturbing. Tupal, you can mute. Tupal, you can mute. All right. Thank you. Isaac, we can hear you clearly. Thank you very much. Uh, let me deal with uh, a criticism, scathing criticism that came from uh, the impositor that calls himself a Wachitiwa, Biamazima, the loser, the sissy, the sucker, the goody goody that calls himself the best young lawyer. Mr. Biamazima, stop putting wool on your colleagues. Young lawyer is the transient stage. You will soon be a failure in the stage that comes after, and there's no glory there. Young lawyers on the space who are being infantilized by these jokers that want to speak the language of charity and benevolence, like Yamazima, he is, he is the wrong example of what leadership looks like. He's pouring cold water on fire in your babies, which you need right now to carve out yourself a future at the bar in these very last times. He's telling you to sit at the back of the bus while this system drives you to nowhere. He's advising you that it's okay to eat leftovers of a rotten system rather than hunting for fresh meat. At the bar, you eat what you kill. Nakato is right to complain about the lack of a minimum wage, but that is not specific to the legal profession, as Mr. Ivan Okuda has told you. That is part of the stronghold of neoliberal reforms that have been imposed on us as an economy. All right? So don't let imposters like Yamazima uh, take out oxygen. You know, from our reform agenda. I urge you not to dance to the same old drumbeat that Yamazima, Atkunda, and Kipalu are selling you while the House of Law burns. Our young lawyers, we need you to chase the hyena of corruption. Not to hashtag it, as Dr. James has come to his senses. Don't hashtag corruption away. Chase the hyena. Chase the hyena. Like Okuda has told you for 14 years, I have chased the hyena of corruption in a specific case that is now at the Supreme Court and will set the tone for anti-corruption in Uganda and across the world. 
I did not play with the kittens of complacency and I don't intend to continue to do that. Uganda has given me minimal success against so many risks. I intend to celebrate it by offering my candidacy so you can bask in the little that I have to offer. I have some gifts. Don't be misled by haters. Okay? Business as usual. The deal being offered by AI and KK. I hate those initials. It's like brewing tea with cold water. It simply will not work. I urge you young lawyers, come 28th. Alright? I need fire in your bellies on that day. I need to see your lightning. Bring your thunder. Win the day. Win the day. And sign, give me a massive mandate so I can fight the villain of the day called Chilio Wachwanka. He is a child of patronage for the last 25 years. Patronage through and through. Patronage manifest. And he, this uh, Chiwanuka, these Chiparus and the Pundas bring Chiwanuka to Chiwanuka your young lawyers mentorship series to tell you lies, poison and vermin. That is not the truth. That is not the house of law as it is in Uganda. Let us use the remaining campaign days to spark real change. I have, I am very grateful for the tributes I've received from my colleagues with whom we have gone toe-to-toe, -to -toe, elbow to elbow, but they are still able to rise above the fog of war and say, the tiger has emanated. It is Isaac time. Listen to them. They don't speak from a point of grace. They don't speak from a point of loss. They are celebrating a rival. They have measured him. They have tested him. And they found him fit and proper to be first among equals. Listen to them. They are young lawyers too. Okay? I am enemy number one in the prosecution department. But the prosecutor risks all to endorse me. I am the sole attorney who has sued the DPP. A judge for taking a lawyer's job. A lawyer's job called prosecution. The DPP takes it. And that Afkunda tells you that he has any record of promoting rule of law. Where was he? When a judge stole a lawyer's job. Where was he? When two lawyers who we should have voted took jobs for the best of the best who had represent us in the Judicial Service Commission. The agency that hires judges, disciplines them, sets the tone for hygiene. Apkunda, Apkunda's mandate, during Apkunda and Uno's mandate, you returned. No, Ra, Matovu Wini, you returned. Ruth Sebatin to the Judicial Service Commission. Shame upon you. You're such a disgrace. I do not wish to even entertain you, repeat the words rule of law in your mouth ever again. You returned evil. Evil. You have not given us a chance to elect the new members to the Judicial Service Commission. Yet its mandate lapses this year, this December. In, in last year you told a judge that it's expensive to hold elections for society representatives in the Kalari case. It was decided in February. You had nine months to plan an AGM to organize society elect representatives for the Judicial Service Commission. Why did you leave it out? Why are they campaigning? Why is it Steve Kagawa on the ballot to represent us in the Judicial Service Commission? Why is it Frank Anduho on the ballot to represent us in the Judicial Service Commission? Because they have the necessary seniors. Alright? Why are we, why are they surplus requirements? Yet it's their time to set the tone for radical surgery of the judiciary. Guys, let's be serious. Afkunda, you say that turning up to do bail applications for protesters was a high water mark of your rule of law career. You have conveniently not told members that you, as secretary, you rejected requests for EGMs to discuss consequential issues concerning to do with rule of law. Helping the public. Assisting and advising government on conflict lines around answer of justice. You wrote under your own hand just recently, saying that it is not necessary for us to question whether police response to the march to protest parliament, march to parliament protest, was constitutional. You said, as long as we go to the bail, we don't need to check, we don't need to conduct a post-mortem. You wrote under your own hand. Just recently, last week, the, the, the evil of the day, you know what, Chuanuka, spewed innocence into the public arena about torture and bail. You have not written even a statement. Are you in his pocket or in his donuts? Please, get out of the election. Go home. You are a loser and a loser and a loser. Allow us to discuss and start mandate, which is radical. Thank you, Isaac. You did not, you did uh, not allege your Uganda Non-Reform Commission when it offered to sell laws which until 1st July were free in soft copy. You speak of it as necessary. You're, you're, you're guilty of prison. You should die. Thank you, Isaac, for your parting shots. Uh, I wish to tell all our listeners that time is fast spent. We stretched further than we thought we could. But from all the three candidates you have listened, you have heard, you have discerned. Please make a choice of your best presidential candidate come 28th September. My advice is that the choice you make will either put down the society or propel it 
to recognition of its own members within and outside Uganda. I want to thank you so much, and I want to wish you a very, very good night. As we close, one of the members has posted something that is very interesting, and he says, what if now Semakade passes as president, Uganda Law Society, is going to sit at a new building that is near to your watch one window. Good night.